Hello, pandas. Some of you may have heard there are precious metals in old electronics. Platinum, palladium, rhodium, and of course, gold. Well, I don't know who spilled the beans, but it's true. Circuit board components are made with precious metals, and I'm about to show you where. Now, I think the best way to add value to a subject like this, which admittedly already has many examples, is a quick and dirty guide for anybody who's picking through circuit boards and wants to make sure they don't miss anything important. If you want to know more about any of this, I wouldn't know anything if not for the undisputed e-waste king on YouTube, e-waste Ben. The man's a legend and a treasure. Now, I'll save the advice and disclaimers till the end and let's jump right in with some examples where possible. Let's start with the obvious, the visible gold. You can see it. Gold-plated fingers are common, as is gold flashing on parts of fiber boards. You can chase the gold plating under the solder mask by scraping some of the mask away, but those traces on the board are nearly always copper. In fact, most of the parts on the board are going to be copper. Gold is used because of its high conductivity, so it's going to be on data contact points. If you look at any of these pins and inputs, the gold color will be there because they'll be gold plated. The deeper the color, the thicker the gold plating. Gold can be hidden in other places and we'll visit those now. Moving on to the components, there are three main categories to start us off and we're going to begin with the chips. The proper name for these are integrated circuits or ICs. These chunky centipede looking things can contain gold, but usually only contain silver and sometimes platinum. Refiners will buy bags of these. Memory ICs, like the ones on RAM sticks, should be kept separate because of the higher density of precious metals, along with the ones with legs on all four sides. The next group of components are the little black squares that don't have legs sticking out of them. These are microprocessors, which are surface mounted with grids of little balls of solder on the underside, so they are called ball grid arrays, or BGAs. They're essentially tiny bags of chips. There are good ones and bad ones, and the good ones will be the best gold recovery you'll get because of the gold bonding wires running through them. These have a much higher yield than any sort of gold plating. You can think of removable CPUs as a sibling in this category, but keep them separate. And the worst ones are the green fiber ones with the visible silicone chip in the middle. Those have such a low gold yield, they probably aren't even worth collecting. All this stuff comes in countless shapes and sizes, and now is probably a good time to mention if you don't know what it is, you should just go ahead and crack it open and have a look inside. You'll be able to see if it's gold or if it just has little swirls of copper inside, like some of the chunkier ICs. Capacitors, on the other hand, you won't learn anything by opening them up, but some of them are worthless and some of them are worth a lot, so let's have a look. We'll start with monolithic ceramic capacitors, or MLCCs. These tan brown little bricks with soldered points on both ends. They're valuable because they have a high amount of palladium, as well as smaller amounts of silver and a little bit of gold. Some of them are super small though, so maybe just grab the big ones. Up to you. They're often bundled together in neat little rows along with resistors, which aren't worth squat. So in order to know, if you look at the board, it's usually marked with a C for capacitor. That's what you want. Other letters could be L for inductor, D for diode, R for resistor, or T for transformer. Generally, avoid those. Unfortunately, the price of palladium has doubled in the past few years, so manufacturers have started making these with nickel instead. But you can still get a decent price for a bag like this, about $25 a pound. Same as the next ones, the tantalum capacitors. These are usually mustard yellow bricks with a silver, gray, or orange stripe on the end, but they can also be black. They can also be resin dipped, basically any color, with a little L-shaped marking, or a silver stripe again, or they can be little silver tubes, or they can look like an MLCC, but uh, bright orange. Basically, look for the C on the board. The other more common capacitors do have aluminum on the outside, but they're basically worthless. Now, a bonus category we're going to call silver nubbins. A lot of these are crystals. They have a little piece of crystal inside with a small bit of pure silver attached. The bigger ones with more legs are oscillators. They can have gold legs and a gold-plated base which extends all the way to the inside, so they're worth checking. And the best ones have the gold rim around them. They're really tiny, but they have the best value by weight. Those are the important ones. There's also silver and sometimes gold in LEDs, but that will be difficult to recover. And relays and switches also have little bits of silver in them as well. The rest of what's on here is generally copper. These MOSFETs have a plate of copper, and these little square chunky things are transformers, also copper. You can crack them open to check. 
Oh, and the aluminum heat sinks are extruded aluminum. Then the, the rest of it, the solder and the legs are all tin. That's basically everything in a nutshell. And again, if you really want to get into it, E-Waste Ben has piles of the stuff and is extremely knowledgeable. I'll link his channel in the description so you can go and check it out. Tell him I say hi. But if you want my suggestion, don't pick apart circuit boards for the money. This is my collection. I like to pick off the good capacitors, trim the obvious gold, save the RAM and CPUs, and give the rest to electronics recycling. I'm in Canada, and most of our scrapyards don't buy boards, which is a shame, but call around and see if you have one that does, because the fact is this. At home, your recovery rates are going to be tragic compared to the big operations. You might get a little bead of gold, but you'll be getting a fraction of what you would have if you were able to capture all the platinum, palladium, and silver. Not to mention the tantalum, rhodium, copper, and even the tin. The big operations have systems to reclaim all of that, and that's why they pay good money for motherboards and hard drive boards and everything. The best money you could make from this is selling it as is and then buying gold with the cash. I'm only doing this because it'll be cool to sell a bag of tantalum when it does the same thing that palladium did. Rant over. Leave a like and a comment if you care to. I know it's cringy YouTube stuff, but it's a massive help and I appreciate it. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.